All right, what's going on, guys? Uh, we are back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, we have a very special guest. Uh, we got Steve. He was one of the junior mods over at MIC. Uh, so, Steve, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Excited of course, man, of course. So, I guess we like to start it off with the usual, you know, how did you kind of get into trading and how did you come to find MIC? Sure. So, I, I guess back in summer 2017, um, I had gone to like Croatian Bosnia. I got a bunch of buddies out there and they were all like mining and trading like cryptocurrencies, right? Oh shit, yeah. So I didn't want anything to do with this. I was kind of like, what is this? You know, I didn't know much about it. Um, and then they kind of brought me up to speed and then they actually like opened up an account for me, like, a, like an app. And they were like, hey, you got to try this. Just put like a few hundred dollars, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was there like for one of their weddings and I was there a couple of weeks and like, Every day, like this is when like Bitcoin was like six or seven grand, you know, yeah, before yeah. it hit the 20K peak, 2018-ish, uh, early. So every day, like it would be up like crazy, you know, it was running up. So I kept like, okay, well, let me put a couple hundred more and a couple hundred more. And next thing I'm like, well, let me just put like two grand, you know? Yeah. So I've like got like a couple grand in there by the time it's been a week and I'm just watching like 300 a day and four, I'm like, this is crazy. Like, I can't believe this is like happening, you know? So, uh, and keep in mind, I don't know anything about trading at all. I yep. mean, did you have a retirement account? Like, do you have any sort of investments that way or just? At just the nothing? time, at the time, my story is a lot different now, but at the time, yeah. like I, I felt I had a pretty good job. I was doing like real estate development in California yep. and uh, cool. yeah. So I, you know, Money wasn't really an issue, but I just didn't know anything about trading. So I, you know, like I said, I had some money in there and it kept going up. By the time I left that trip, I mean, I don't remember, but it was up like some crazy amount. I was just like psyched. I was like, this is crazy, you know? <laughs> so then I get back to the US <laughs> and we're just sharing every day. I can't believe this, you know? Yeah. So this is like, I don't know what month it was, maybe August, September, I'm not exactly sure. But I remember the date when it started to crash. That was like around Christmas or right after yeah, Christmas. Yeah, I know that yeah, yeah, yeah. Fact. Like I know that day. So the months leading up to that, um, you know, it was just like I would put more and more money. Finally, I'm like, okay, let me put five grand. Let me put eight grand. Let me, let me just put money. So I had like, I don't remember how much I had put. But at one point right before Christmas, my whatever the initial, it was like 10 or 12 grand. I don't know. But it was like 26 grand. Yeah. And I'm just like, I mean, at that point, it's kind of like a, a pump. It is a really like a pump. It's the mentality yeah. of yeah. what stocks get pumped and these guys just chase it. Yeah. So I, I mean, I've been there, I know. But the thing is, you're never going to sell it. I mean, not for me. When you're greedy, you just hold it. Yeah. Yeah. That's so like all you, the Doge guys right now doing the same yeah. thing. So like you hear yeah. a rumor, it's going to be hundred grand. And you're like, well, I'm not ever selling yeah. this. I mean, this is my new life. I mean, I just every day I wake up and there's, another two grand in my account. It's, it's like math. Yeah. yeah. So Christmas comes and it starts to fall and it was right around Christmas or right after it starts to fall. And I'm kind of panicking. I'd wake up and one or two grand was gone and I would be waking up at 5am and checking, you know, the deal. And I couldn't sleep. And I was just like, what's going on? So I started following some groups online on like, I don't remember where Facebook or Twitter. And they'd be yeah. like, hold, hold, hodl, don't like, never let this go. And I'm like, yeah. okay. But the thing is when it would crash, I would just freak out and sell it. But then the next day <laughs> it would pop. So what would I do? I would buy it back. Yeah, classic backside mentality. Yeah, and it was back. It's, you know, that's why I know what happens to these guys when they don't follow MIC and they're just getting bumped. Yeah. Cause it happened to me. So long story short to get past this story, I waited till my account had like three grand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like. Right. Oh, that's me and ripple that was me and ripple. Yeah, I, I don't even like, like to talk about it <laughs> no i know so i i don't even share the story ever but yeah. you know uh so luckily it wasn't like my rent money or anything but still watching that money like dwindle is like hard you know so yep. i stopped and i like decided i don't care what happens i'm never putting money in there again and i started like like i knew bow through mutual friends yep. like we weren't really friends oh, cool. But yep. like 10 years ago, we had some friends and I went to his place for a New Year's party. So like I oh, was cool. friends with him on Facebook. So I had seen he started a group and I was like, yep. okay, like maybe I should join this group. 
but unfortunately, like I didn't know him well, so I wasn't sure like, should I join yep. this group or try crypto? I didn't know what to do. So I tried a little kind of crypto first and I didn't do well for six months, or whatever it was, eight months. And then um, about two years ago or a little more than two years ago, I'm like, okay, I need to just join MIC and like see what's going on because I'm not having like any luck, right? Yeah, yep. And, and I mean, I knew I didn't want to be pumped to or I didn't want to follow like signals or alerts yep. in any way. Yeah. I just wanted to learn. Like I want to do it myself. I don't want yeah. to depend on anybody because I had been burned so badly. Like if I didn't listen to anybody's advice, I probably would have sold it when it started to dip and just made good with 20 grand or whatever. But yeah, 100%. I kept listening to people. And 100%. That was my, yeah. yeah that's I mean, go ahead, Harry. Sorry. Well, I just think with a lot of these things, it's like, it gets to a point where it's like, it's not that you're losing money or it's not anything like that. I think it's that a lot of people get caught up in the community of the Bitcoin or the GME. For sure. Yes. For sure. Where it's like, if you sell, you're almost saying to the community, it turns into like a mini cult where it's, yeah. if you sell, yeah. you're out of the cult. So right. not only when it's dipping do you have the issue of oh it's losing money you also have the issue of wow i'm out of the call i'm no longer a bitcoiner anymore and right. sometimes that i find can be like scary harder yeah you better Dude, as maybe you as we're recording this i just got a youtube notification that just said do not sell your safe moon which is just some other <laughs> like stupid <laughs> crypto that's being bombed like <laughs> Just, right, just right. Popped up. But Dogecoin has a community. Like GME has a community still. They okay. all have AMC. They all have little communities. They all do their own research of why it should go up, why it should do this, why it should do that. And when you sell, everyone's like, no, you're not part of the community anymore. Like you're kicked out. Like you're booted out. Like you're, you're terrible. You're a disgrace. I think that yeah. can also be like, you know, some of the reason why people aren't selling because I think when it goes down, the majority of people know that they should be selling, but they're part yes. of this. Like that was my instinct. Like just sell it. hundred percent, hundred percent. But because you got the boys every day that you're talking to that you're checking <laughs> up on. And, yeah. Like you assume they knew more than you. I mean, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Steve is kind of a good example of like, I, I post about this in after hours and we talk about it often, but you know, with crypto, there's going to be all those one, sh one trick ponies that make a shit ton of money on the pump up. Um, right. But 90% of the time, the people who made money are going to slowly bleed out and give it back because they truly don't know what they're doing. And that's kind of what happens exactly. to you. Kind of, it's what exactly. happened to me. And yes. then you, you go on and you find real education. And that's right. when you realize like, okay, there is a future in investing and trading, but there's more to it than just getting in something, hodling and praying to the Lord Shiba Inu that it's going to go to the moon kind of thing. Right? right. So, so that's pretty cool. So then how did you come to decide to join MIC? What was the final kind of push? Just, you weren't making it so, or. Yeah. Like after the crypto thing, I decided like, okay, this is just gambling. Like, I don't want anything to do with this. I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> luckily it wasn't my like mortgage money. I mean, I had yeah. money, so it wasn't like, but still, like I said, I mean, yeah. it's still, it's painful. Yeah. So I was kind of following Bao, but. Uh, I was kind of like trying to learn uh, Forex too. I just, I didn't know like. Oh, dude. dude so <laughs> Don't let Alex watch this shit. He'll fucking fly to you and beat yeah, your kill me. Well, there's no story to that. That was like six, yep. eight months of me not getting anywhere. And then finally saying, yep. I need, I need to dedicate all my time and energy into learning with MIC. Yep. And that was like two years, maybe a little more than two years ago. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. And that's kind of when uh, things started obviously getting a little brighter for me <laughs> that's cool now are you married are you married no i'm single actually my girlfriend's right here good for fucking you now how old are you yeah. uh 44 44 so now while you were doing all this did you find like your parents or like friends anyone in your life did they approve of what you were doing or were people telling you like you're an idiot or like what was what was kind of like the outside perspective on on everything you were trying to do um I don't know. I guess like I wasn't really surrounded by people who were trading. Yeah. So yep. people didn't really have much of an opinion. It was just kind of like, you know, if you're making money, that's great. And I think some of them also kind of wanted to learn too. Yeah. So I had a pretty supportive like group around me. It wasn't like. That's really cool. That's cool. Yeah, Cause most people don't like Harry, we've talked about this. Like 
most people we've had on the show, most people's families are kind of like, what the hell are you doing? Like, especially yeah. friends too. They kind of think yeah. you're like gambling or you have no idea. Yeah. Like, yeah, I've been through it with like friends with family. I mean, now it's to a point where like, yeah, I am like quote unquote successful with it. So, I mean, the people, I mean, in my perspective, the people who didn't really support me from the beginning, like I don't really have much to do with them anymore, but right. I mean, that being said, like, I, I still understand their perspective. So I'm, I'm cool with it. I get it. But I mean, I did go through it definitely with that. Um, I mean, I think like, so once you joined MIC, so you join MIC, you know, you watch the videos, like, what do you think it took for you to like start getting on the right track to start kind of, you know, just what was it that kind of made it start getting a little bit brighter? So I guess like, unfortunately I had to unlearn like a lot of bad mistakes and just kind of, you know, the wrong, like I was using trading, I was using other kind of charting platforms and now I use the awesome Cobra and all that. And it's great. Nice. But great. it's just like that transition was, it took a little time. Cause I mean, it's all, it's better to just come like with a clear head and not knowing anything than to come with those bad habits. So once I really like got rid of those bad habits and started just really following the MIC way, uh, things started getting better. Um, I struck my main struggle. I think it, it might be common with a lot of people, but really like the, the setups and all that. And it's kind of like which setups are working in which market, what market are we in? Like that stuff you could, I mean, anybody can really grasp that and, and pick it up yep. pretty quick. I think if, if they dedicate yep. the time, right. Yep. Um, and they're really serious about learning. The thing that I struggled with though was like discipline. So it yep. would be like FOMO, revenge trading, you know, that kind of thing. And I was, I did something smart as I listened to Bao and I just told him yep. one day, like, hey, tell me what to do here. <laughs> He's like, look, <laughs> put X amount of money, get Cobra, get DOS, start learning. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to follow these directions. Yeah. And he's like, set up a max loss, do this, this. So I did. So luckily, um, I revenge traded. I've lost like, you know, my cool and all that, but I've always had like a max loss. I've always been safe. I mean, yep. even now, my max loss is only like, one or one and a half times an average daily win. That, I mean, yeah, I keep that, it. That's, I like to keep it. that's yeah, fucking key. When, if my losses are getting close, I just try to trade smaller now, you know? And yeah. It, it works. It's so but, funny. It's so funny. Like trading is such an ego thing where like you almost you feel like you wrong. have to figure it out. Yeah. You don't want to be wrong. You don't, you want to figure it out on your own, but like, I always kind of like to revert it back to like, at least on my personal side, like I like to revert it back to like barbering. And like, you know, when I was coming up and like learning how to cut hair originally, like I was listening to the guys who had been doing it for 20 years and taking their tips on how to like be better, make more money, do this. And it's funny, like people join MIC and then like they choose to ignore the things that like guys like Harry, guys like Alex, Bal, like the stuff they say. And they're right. like, oh, but I need to figure it out on my own. It's like, it's funny if you just, like you said, if you just listen to them, like yeah. their basic, basic advice, you're going to be a thousand times better than the average guy who just is winging it right off the bat without right. even like actually right. trading, you know? Right. So, it, so it's funny. And, and that was that, that was like the pivot point for you. Just kind of listening to those, like MIC, the, the, the process it, itself. Basically, if you could follow directions well, and don't, like you said, I mean, you can't really have a huge ego in this game. You, you've got to be like, like we see some members and you give them some quick advice or they hear Bao's advice or whatever. And they're kind of like offended. I'm like, dude, like you gotta like be humble. Come to this like I don't know anything. I need to be a sponge and learn it yeah, all. I agree. And yeah. if, if you have an ego, you're just you're not gonna do that well here. You, yeah, you gotta humble yourself. Like every the best mods and you guys, you guys are like I'm learning every day. Yeah. I mean, you guys are like trading amazing. It's like I would be thrilled to yeah, like. You we're know. learning every day too. That's, right. that's the funny thing. That's, like we like, so like Harry and I talk about it all the time. Like, we're learning new shit every single day that we're like talking to like like right. every time you talk to guys like Alex or Bao, you're picking yeah. up like golden nuggets without them even knowing them. Like they're just dropping right. them behind. It's right. it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And then I don't know if you guys know, but I did something pretty amazing. Um kind of related to trading August, I guess. It was August of 2019. Um, I had been with MIC, whatever, four or five months, and I had, you know, kind of nest egg, and I'm just like, hey, I'm just going to do what I love to do and, and travel, and I just 
kind of quit my job and all that. And I left and I've been traveling full time ever since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. I just wanted to get into that. I wanted to, I didn't know. I didn't even know that. Or if I was going to bring it up. So yeah, so you end up kind of becoming like almost like a full time traveler as well as trading as well. So like yes. maybe you want to touch on about that as well. Like what's that? That's fucking like sick. Traveling on the on the road and shit like that's pretty yeah wild. like you're in turkey it's, right now aren't you i'm in turkey right now yeah, yeah you're in turkey yeah, it's right now traveling. it's amazing i mean it's uh it's just it's amazing like i want to say five or six years ago i spent six months in asia and taiwan and i was traveling around and learning chinese for fun and so i knew that i love traveling i just traveled a lot in general you know but i was like man i just want to do this like full time I mean, I just want to, it's, it's just my dream. I just want to travel. And I had a bunch of buddies and that I mentioned in Croatia and Bosnia and in Europe. Um, and, and, and I'm just like, I'm just going to go. I've been all over Asia. I just want to go spend a bunch of time in Europe. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I said, Hey, and I knew because when I was between classes in Taiwan, I knew that for that month, I like was, I became depressed. Like if you don't have any goals, you can't yeah. just like travel and have fun and think that everything's going to be great. You're going to get bored. Like you need to have, goals and something to do no matter if you need the money or not yeah so i was like yeah i've got enough money for you know x amount of time years and i'm going to sustain myself basically with trading hopefully if i get to that level and that was kind of my thinking and uh really i mean coming from california like i don't need much to live in europe i mean two or three yeah. grand a month i'm pretty good you know yeah um, depending where you are right yeah but yep. yeah so i like left and the first six months i mean i was everywhere i was just having a ball like i was with my buddies in croatia then i can't i mean i always miss places but it was like germany italy spain portugal it's fucking sick uh bosnia croatia <sighs> dubai dubai was sick oh yeah uh montenegro um hungary greece greece was crazy um so yeah like and now i'm in turkey i've been here probably so like since lockdown it's a little since the pandemic, it's a little tougher, but I've still been in Malta, Turkey, Bosnia, mainly with friends and my girlfriend and stuff like that. Uh, but That's I've got a lot some of fun, dude. It's just crazy. Like next month, I'm meeting one of my buddies and uh, he's going to go to Serbia. We're going to meet up. Sick. Uh, if Stefan is there, he'll meet up with us too. But, but like I said, I've got buddies across the border in Bosnia. So I'm going to hang out with them a while. Then my other buddy from Vegas, he's a professional poker player. He's going to meet me in Europe and we're going to hit a couple countries for a couple months. And then I'm excited to get back to the U.S. and visit with like friends and family for a couple months. That's amazing. Now, is it hard for you to trade like on the go like that, or because you still make a lot of time to trade? So, like, is it is it challenging or? Yeah. So, like, not really. Like, what I do, I mean, if I'm in transit, obviously, then there might be a yeah. day here and there. But what I do is it's, and I've heard a lot of people talk about this, but I I really like. I like to stay in Airbnbs or I'm like with my girl now, or I'm with my buddies in, in some countries. But when I go to an Airbnb and I've never been there, I'm like, how big is your TV? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and I come in there and I check first, I set it up, make sure it works cool. I'm like, okay, I'll take it. We'll try it for a week. How's your internet? You know? And I try it for That's a week awesome. and if I like it, like in Malta, I was in one place for two months and that was pretty cool. Yeah. But I've got to like, make sure everything's cool. I like to set up my laptop to a big tv and i've got kind of my charts there and it's pretty much like you know i mean you can see a lot of charts and yeah. i i can focus on four on every tab and i've got like four tabs you know so i kind awesome. of put them together and i trade one or two at a time and it, it works pretty well i mean i'm used to it mm-hmm. i mean so you're pretty much living like the like a lot of traders dreams like you're doing you became like profitable you started making money and now you're just like traveling all over the world. And like, that's really freaking cool. Like, I, I, I think a lot of guys that get into this industry and this job because they, that's what they want. Like, that's like the, yeah, the yeah. ultimate freedom. And like, you kind of have that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's a dream come true. And anybody who's like on the fence about MIC, and I mentioned this today in the YouTube video, like, just check out my Instagram. It's traveled guy, traveled guy with a D. Mm-hmm. And you can see, I mean, it's, it's real life. You know, this has been what I've been doing almost two years now. And it's just amazing. Yeah, that's fucking sick. I'm fucking jealous, bro. <laughs> Man, that's you sick. could come out and hang out anytime, James. You know? No, it's... dude. I'm, <laughs> don't, I'll, I'll take you up on that for sure. Because honestly, once once this COVID shit's over, man, like I think the yeah, one sure. of the shining things of MIC is like the meetups and like meeting right. with other traders and like going places. Like yeah. once this shit's over, yeah. man, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm going traveling for exactly. sure. Exactly. No, so I was actually 
uh, kind of pitching to Alex a couple months ago. I'm like, hey, man, once things start opening up, like I will be all over if you want to do a meetup here or there, like I'll help you host, like whatever you need me to do. I'm like traveling. I know so many people now in so many places. And yeah. And I'm, I'm actually te teaching a couple of my buddies, the same ones who are mining. I've been trying to teach them to trade. And they're That's starting awesome. to have some luck with yeah, options. You should definitely yeah. tell them to join and be like, boys, you know. Right. That's what we Yeah, no, actually a That's bunch cool. of my friends did join from the US. Oh, they joined. Sad. One of them like signed uh, um, annual. I was like, hey, try it out for a month. They're like, no, I already signed an annual. I'm like, cool. That's awesome. <laughs> but I think people like see my smart story. Guy. And they're like, hey, I'm just going to, you know, give it a try. And yeah. See how it goes. yeah, I love that. Yeah, dude, that. that's like inspirational yeah. shit. And like, I guess like one of my last, one of my last big questions was like, if you were talking to like people who want to do what you're doing, you know, it obviously takes some balls to like even do it, to like get into trading and then just travel the world and basically be like, well, I'm going to live off this and like do it. Right. What was like the biggest like piece for you that got you? Like if you had to tell someone like, you know, before you do this, like, you know, these are the steps, what would it be for you? Oh, yeah, yeah. So this, and I'll try to like compact it, but I mean, you can imagine yeah. I went through a lot of things, right? So yeah, when I first left, like I downsized. I mean, really, you've got, you're a nomad. So you've got to like get rid of your attachment to stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like my yeah. most valuable thing right now is like what I'm looking at is my laptop. Yeah. And I've got That's another cool. one in Bosnia yeah. if this one has a problem. Cool. I had like a really nice Durango. I just gave it to my parents and I think I owed like 20 on it, but it was worth almost 30. I just said like, here you go. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they've done a lot for me. Right. But yeah, yeah of course. I, I don't wear like nice watches. I don't care. I just, I only trade for freedom. Like that's, yeah, that's my amazing, thing. I don't dude. care it's about fucking amazing. Nice stuff. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, James. Like when I settle down, maybe someday I want a sick car like yours, but for yeah. now, like I'm just, <laughs> I'm traveling everywhere. Yeah. So like, yeah, of the, course. The, the details, you know, I had to pin down a lot of things like you don't want to be paying conversion fees. So you need to get some good credit cards that pay you 2% and have free uh, cool. conversion transaction fees in any country. Yeah. So yeah. I did that kind of thing. Um, every month I just charge and then I draft for my bank. So like, I don't ever have to pay fees. I keep X amount of cash or I could go yeah. to the ATM, but they always get you with fees. So like, little details like that. I minimized all my expenses. My only expense really now is like my, my cell phone. And I've got like an international plan, yeah. 70 books. I've got data anywhere in the world. That's, that's know, sick, nowadays. No, yeah. That's so just some of the details, I mean, but yeah. it's anybody could yeah. DM me anytime and, and we could chat about that. But. Bro, you should make a video on this. Cause like, honestly, I'd love to, cause like, I, I love traveling before, before COVID and shit, like traveling oh, really? was like, what makes me happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and uh, totally. you should make a video on this because I know there's a lot of members that travel around. Like, like uh, I mean, I know he goes all around with his wife too. Like, it, it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, and and I think that. like, yeah, for sure. And I think that's like, you You really are, like I said, I, I hate to reiterate it, but if you're living like the dream of most people and I think that's something you should be proud of. And I think that's something that you shouldn't uh, shouldn't sleep on. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I think one question. No, I, keep going. Yeah. Oh, no, I Sorry. think one question that I have is like, you know, I'm sure it's happened to you before where like, I mean, and I'm just curious for, because myself, like when I start traveling, like, you know, I have a girlfriend as well. And like, we definitely want to go places and stuff like that. How did you kind of deal with like losses on the road? You know, like you're on the road, you're traveling, you Good know, question. maybe it's a day before you trade, or maybe it's a day where you're going to the beach and you have maybe a nice day planned and then you take a loss. And because like how I wanted to do it is that I was like, fuck it. Like I'm not trading at all when I'm traveling because I'm going to be willing uh, to like, press, pay, yeah. for this, pay for that. Right. But like, right. so you take a loss on the road, like maybe give me a little bit of insight on like, kind of like the mentality that would go through your head during that. I would say, sure. I would say like, like I mentioned um, when I started and I guess more like last year, I had a issue sometimes with with discipline yeah so it would be exactly what you said is i would like i used to play poker a lot yeah i would yeah. tilt right I, I i would tilt and i'd be like oh my god like like you know it stops you out now the trade works and you're like ah, right. yeah 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 <laughs> you jump back in but now it's ready to go back you know so like it would stress me out so basically i really like i watched a lot of stuff on the psychology a lot of austin's videos helped me his webinars because sure. he, he talks about this psychology a lot um but really i used to have a bigger max loss like yeah. two or three times or whatever it was and i reduced it to like 
it's probably around one and a half or something like yeah. that now. Yeah. So I think that helps me a lot. And I mean, my, my girlfriend has seen it. It's kind of like, you know, she'll be like, are you down today? How much? I'll be like, it, it can never be that much. That's all I say. Yeah. It can never be that much. So I try to keep That's it to true. where I can never really care that much. And, and I yep. try to look at the big picture results like the yes. week or the month. And I know that some days like nothing is just going to work the way you want it to. So for me, it's really keeping my losses down to that kind of average profit day and a half of, of a max loss. And I try really hard when it's like half that, just either stop, you know, or yep. trade really small, like I said, and, and if there's no A plus, just she'll see me like, I'm like, I'm done looking at screens, at, at charts today. Yeah. But then <laughs> I'm pretty good at it now. Like we would just cook dinner and her, you know, some of her family will be here and we'll just hang out. And then I just kind of yeah, yeah. tune it out. That's I cool. mean, yeah. the thing is like, I, I learned a little bit of this when I used to play poker, because I actually played full-time poker when uh and on poker stars when the economy was bad in like 20 oh, shit. Like that. <laughs> that's, that's cool. yeah so i met my buddies in europe right we used to play that's together. sick so like whenever i lose i mean think about this like if you made 500 bucks i know for you you guys this isn't much but if i made like 500 bucks and money, then the money, next bro. <laughs> 200 yeah i guess i'd be mad but then if you reversed it and you you lost 200 then you made 500 you'd be thrilled yeah yeah but that's the, a good that's a good way to put it which, yeah the order in which it happened is really relevant i mean you're still up 300 bucks it, it didn't really matter yeah 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 so why should your weekend be like ruined so i try to kind of keep this perspective yeah. but no it's that's not cool. sometimes it you know so really yeah. no. like, kind of like the max loss was what kind of helped keep you in check and be able to kind of like tame you in order from getting to that point where you were super stressed out or getting to that point, like, cause I guess you kind of know your own limits yourself. So you've said, okay, yes. I have this max loss. If I go over this, that's what's going to stress me out. That's what's going to. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, once you know what that number is, like if, if it stresses you to lose 500, then make your max loss a little less yeah. than that. I mean, if, if you can live with like losing whatever amount, then, you know, think yeah. of a, I mean, I know on MIC, I've seen some of the mods will see like two times your average yeah. daily win is a good amount. Yeah, that's probably that's around mine. Yeah, yeah, but for me, I just fine tuned and I'm like, look, if I get to half this, I'm going to trade smaller. I'm going to close the yeah. screens. Yeah. yeah. So like for me, because I have, you guys have, you know, 10 times better discipline than me. So I know that I need mine a little tighter and I need to be trading smaller when I get close to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that of helps course. Me. I don't, I don't want to. That's awesome. I, I tilt when I lose two times, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, just, dude, I, I'm the same way. I, I have that number in my head that's like, I made videos right. on it. It's like, if I lose more than X, I'm going to feel like a piece of shit. And exactly. it's going to ruin my yes. day. It's going to annoy me. So my number is right. way below that. So that way it doesn't affect me. Exactly. And, and I guess, so, I mean, we're coming up on our 30 minute kind of window, but the last thing that popped into my head that I kind of wanted you to touch on. So you've been a professional gambler with poker yes. and you've been a, yes. you've been a professional trader. So what are like, give me like one, a similarity in both and something that is maybe a misconception that people see and they're like, oh, you're just like, cause I, when I told my girlfriend's parents or family or whatever, they're like, oh, are you, is it, isn't that gambling, right? Now what's, right. what's something that's the same and what's something that's different between the two? Something that's the same would be like risk reward ratios and the, a lot of the psychology and, and mental aspects of it, right? I mean, yep. in poker, it's always, it's everything is like, what do I put in and what are my, you know, possible yeah. rewards. And this is kind of a similar way to think, right? So I would say that's, and, and in poker, you could do the same thing. You could have a, you could have a bad beat and then you could tilt and you could just go nuts and you yeah. could lose your stack. Things happen yeah. and you could do the same thing in trading, right? Uh, yep. Things that now on the other side of that, the exact same thing you said, James, I mean, I, I used to have girlfriends and like, once they found out I was playing poker, like it was over. <laughs> yeah. Now, like when I say I trade, actually, it's a lot more respectable. I I think and I find from people around me like than that. playing poker. Like my yeah, parents seem pretty proud. They're like, "Hey, our son is investing and trading," and their friends yeah. are like, "That's cool." But when I was playing poker, they're like, "Because it's degenerate piece of shit." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like my buddies. Yeah. I mean, I, I have I have professional friends that. I kind of gamble like sports professionally and like right. you know 
when I tell people they do that, they might make, they make a shit ton of money, you know, but when I tell people that they're like, what loses, man? Like, <laughs> What do they do? Yeah. You know, but they make right. tons. But, but what I explain to people too, it's like anything in life is a gamble. If yep. you start your own business, it's a gamble. Yep. If you do anything, it's a gamble. I, I worked in real estate development. We used to do shopping malls and uh, the big people gamble. would come in and they'd bring their life savings to open a restaurant and they'd fail. Yep. Yep. I mean, this is, this is gambling. Anything yep. you do in life, getting a, a higher degree is gambling. I mean, is it going to pay yep. off or you have how much student, how much debt? I mean, anything is gambling, getting married. Yep. It's all a gamble. Yep. So if you could manage your risk carefully, then generally you'll be yep. okay. And that's what it's all about. It's really managing your risk. And that's with yeah. anything in life. Yeah. And I, it doesn't I, have to be this. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I look at it this way. Like you're born pretty much. You're born with nothing. I mean, unless right. you're like really well off, like crazy. I mean, you're born with nothing and you die with nothing. So in right. between, you might as well do what you want. That's how I exactly. do it. Yeah. And let me tell you, one, just touching on what you said, Harry, I know we were short on time, but no, go my ahead. grandma uh, 15 years ago moved in with my mom and her plan was I'm going to now travel the world. Yeah. Well, she was around 65, 70, and she started getting dementia, didn't get to do that, yeah. right? So we ended up taking care of her for about 10 years, and I moved in, and we did all that stuff until she passed. So yeah, I'm sorry when I told my mom a couple years ago, I'm going to just travel and live my dream, she was like, you have a great job. Why do you want to leave? And do it when you retire. And I said, look, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But I have a chance to do it now, so I'm going to do it now. Yeah. And plus, I, I assume that. when I'm retired, I'll be taking care of my parents anyway. So how yeah. am I going to get all the time when I retire? Like, if you have a dream, you got to just do it. If you fail, yeah. it's okay. I love but that. But you got to just try. I love that. I love that. I want to fucking, I want to end it on that shit because that, that is like, I love make that. a wish fucking Disney. That is awesome. <laughs> I love that shit. Well, I, I want to say, man, thank you so much for coming on. That was awesome. And, yeah. uh, you know, if anyone wants to reach out, you know, he's in chat. Um, he's one of the junior mods and he's an upcoming sick trader. So reach out to him anytime. All right. Perfect. Sounds good. Yeah. I hope to see you guys out here traveling with me sometime soon. Perfect. (laughs) Hell yeah. That was awesome.